folks. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done a tackle crafting video and I just got a new mold. This one is a uh, weedless football jig and I got the, I'm going to get those base pins out of there. I got this one. It does half, three quarter and one ounce. Really for fishing, um, fishing very deep on our our Maryland and Virginia reservoirs. So that's what it looks like when you're done putting it together. But let's go through what I got in order to do this. Um, for sure, you have the bristle guards, um, but I'm not gonna put the bristle guards in the mold and do it. I've done it that way before. You can put the heat shrink tubing over it and powder paint them. I kind of have, have come to to really enjoy using the pins and I'll show you doing that these these metal pins you can't go quite as quick doing it but I think you end up with a nicer product um, but yeah we got the bristle guards in three different colors black green pumpkin and this uh, well it's brown I like it when things are named what they actually are um, Got some thread for, for tying some of this skirt material on. Um, I got this kind of green pumpkin with the blue glitter. That's just a straight up green pumpkin. I got white for other reasons. And uh, black with blue flake. And this one's like a smoke with purple and black flake. So a couple different skirt materials to work with. And, and some of those are there's kind of two different approaches. Um, you can get the, the skirt tabs and tie them on yourself, which is, is what this is. I'll just show you very briefly. Um, this isn't a complete skirt. You know, you're, you're gonna tie that on there and then you're gonna clip off the end there. Or you can go with the skirt that, that already has the, um, <clears throat> the rubber band in there and that makes it really easy to, to put them together. I usually like to tie them so I might actually be mixing this with some round rubber, round rubber and silicone but uh, that skirt style that has the rubber band on there really makes it easy to, to pull these things together. So uh, what else we got here? Um, <clears throat> For sure we got a bunch of different hooks. I'm going to be using 4-aught and 5-aught. These are black nickel hooks that um, I'm probably going to be using more of the 5s the because I'm going to pour a lot of one ounces. And um, I'll just show you this, how it lays in there. Um, I am going to... I am going to smoke this mold up with a candle first, uh, just to, to make it make sure it releases well. But that will <clears throat> lay in there like that. And then the pin goes in there like that. And we're going to pour these here in, in just a minute, so sit tight. Um, <clears throat> I think I got one, one more thing to show you in here. Um, just got some black powder paint, and then uh, this one has the UV blast. I don't know why I got this. I just wanted to experiment, see what that looks like. So, yeah, let's head out to um, to the shop. I'm gonna fire up the lead pot, and we're gonna pour some jigs. All right. Well, the lead pot here is is heating up. Um, I'm gonna show you what I do to to really help especially a, a brand new mold like this uh, release the the lead and the and the hook and the pin a little bit easier I'm just taking this old um, this old candle that I use for a couple different things I, I smoke the mold but I also use this old spinnerbait wire and you know when I heat that up and I'll stick it up underneath you know up in the the, the bottom where the lead comes out I'll get that hot and I will touch it to that and then run that spinnerbait wire up in there. And that fluxes where it pours out and it keeps it flowing really good. Um, the other thing, you know, the, the wax 
coming off this smoke we start doing that we're just gonna try to get that smoky soot underneath there and that really just helps it helps it release I'm gonna do both sides and uh, I will show you <clears throat> in a little bit we have a, a fluxing agent that we add to the lead to uh, help bring all the impurities to to the surface but that's basically what you end up with is just a lot of a lot of soot in there um, that's going to help it release very well actually i gotta go back in and get that collar that's some of the hardest stuff to really pour it well is that that barb um, so suit it up also preheating the the um, <clears throat> mold by just laying it on top of of the uh, the lead pot it'll warm up and that's really gonna help it um, <clears throat> help it pour well Alright, I'm going to show you this trick with the spinnerbait wire just to make sure that we're starting off pouring really good. I've shoved it up into that, that hole that's pour spout and I've heated it up by just leaving it up in there. It's pouring out pretty good, but I'm just going to touch it to the candle, which gets a little bit of wax on that paper clip and just shove it up in there. You see that kind of smolders up and uh, that fluxes and cleans the pour spout really good. So if it's dribbling, if it's not shooting well, you know, if you get partial, partial pours, um, that's just a trick that can help you out. Um, I have preheated it, letting it sit on on top here it's it's been sitting there for I don't know while this has been heating up but I also like to um, to heat it up by just pouring a couple blanks um, really I put the the spout right on there when I pour there's one and I'll fill them all I mean it's these are big cavities and it's probably dribbling out the bottom because I got no hooks in there but this really just, it, it heats it, but it also lets me know, hey, is, it, is this ready to pour? Is this ready to, to fill all cavities? Is it hot enough? And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what we got. So that's a complete pour. We got good. Now, it's, it's, it's more difficult when you when you have the the pin and, and the hook and everything in there but that's that's a pretty complete pour I'll go ahead and recycle that I got things nice and warm now all I need to do I'm just gonna do the one ounce because that's mostly what I want out of this mold so I'm laying the pin in there and it comes with the with these pins. You can buy extra pins. You can even use, like get some uh, silicone ones that you can cut to your own length and go through them pretty quick. So I'll lay that hook on there like that and we'll close it. Make sure that that's not showing any daylight through there. Put it right underneath the pour spout. Open it all the way and I just back it off enough to know when it's full and I put downward pressure on that to make sure that's not sputtering or spitting at me and that is our first one so we will take that out and I'm gonna use these are just like stainless steel 
like nail clippers for yeah pretty heavy duty ones I think I got them at like Walgreens so I'm just trimming that that sprue off I'm gonna leave leave that on there and I'm gonna powder paint it here in a moment and um, you know it's it's gonna get some paint on this and then I'll scrape it off when I'm done but it'll it'll fully um, <clears throat> you know powder paint that whole thing and then I'm gonna do a bunch of them and I'm gonna show you briefly if I can manage to stop dropping these things these are the um, these are the little Teflon rods why is that not focusing on there I'll zoom there so Teflon rods and um, these work just as well as that that metal pin and you can you can get a whole bunch of these or you can buy you know a, a large pack of of the metal pins uh, which are easy because they they have that that little notch that seats it in the right spot exactly so but I'm gonna make a mess of them with um, with these Teflon pins we're gonna paint them up and then um, <clears throat> then we're gonna start tying them alrighty did about 30 of those in a pretty short period of time really do enjoy pouring jigs um, it just having the <laughs> The security of knowing I got a whole pile of something I know is going to work really well, and I can make more. I mean, I still got more more hooks to pour, but um, the next step is the powder painting. So, what I have here, this is a fluid bed, which we're going to turn on in a moment. It's just a container, and there's there's this air pump that uh, basically fluffs up the the powder paint in there. I know it's hard to see, but I gotta add a little bit more black, so I got a can of black here. And then we gotta heat up the jig head. That's what the heat gun is for. So we'll go ahead and start painting these up, and we're gonna hang them in this toaster oven so they cure. Alright, so I got a pair of pliers here. And I'm grabbing that that eyelet, and that really just keeps paint from getting in the uh, in the eyelet. So it's going to take a minute to get this big chunk of lead good and hot. Don't worry about the Teflon pin that's there. It can handle this heat. And just kind of rotate around, get all sides, and then you just dip it in there. And now it's black. You're going to hang that in the, uh, in the toaster oven and keep making more of them. You can do multiple dips if you feel that's necessary. The fluid bed really gives you an even coating as opposed to if you just take the jar and, and dip it right in there, it kind of compresses it. It gets the job done just, just dipping it in the, the jar, but this uh, the fluid bed really makes it nice and even. So if you do get some some paint in that eye, you really want to take another hook or, or an eye cleaner and get that cleared out before you put it in the uh, in the toaster oven to cure. Because uh, once this paint cures, clearing that that hole gets really tough. You definitely want to see some daylight through there. All right, there's the last one. Uh, I did mostly black, but the last couple I did were, were green pumpkin. Uh, we're gonna carefully slide that in there. We're careful to make sure that, actually that one in the back is touching. You just, you wanna make sure that the, the heads aren't touching each other. 
you can usually see it if you swing just shake a little bit and see if they're if they're gonna swing into each other I think I'm in good shape I'll go ahead and close this and uh, I don't know that's half an hour we'll let it let it uh, sit there and cure and bake I'll come get them when it's done and uh, this evening we'll pour we'll uh, tie a couple up can do some bucktail round rubber and the skirts that you already saw all right that's the pile of jigs that I've made I think I got 16 and then 14 of the um, 14 of the green ones so the the Teflon inserts are a little bit easier to pull out then let me see if I can find one more of the uh, might have pulled all the uh, <clears throat> these metal ones out these these take a little more force you may have to grab a pair of pliers to, to yank them out but we're gonna do two different ties uh, first I'm going to show you the, the easy uh, easier way to do it you already have this this skirt that has a rubber band and we'll put the bristle guard on there and it'll be done. Uh, the, the other one's a little more complicated. It'll be a mix of uh, some bucktail, some the, some of the silicone strips. I got some with the, the uh, black with blue flake and then some regular black and some round rubber. But let's start with this one here. All right, it's pretty simple. I like to keep the, the short end back and put the hook in the longer end just gives it a little bit more fuller skirt just take that hook and uh, just kind of scooch it on there get it past that <clears throat> that collar <clears throat> push that on like that good looking jig right uh, next we're going to take the FG30 and we're gonna put it in there but you don't just stick it in there I like to use the Gorilla Glue which you gotta really just wet it a little bit and uh, I wet the bristle guard and then stick it in the uh, the Gorilla Glue and it's good to go I let them <clears throat> sit overnight and uh, they're in there pretty solid I think I'm going to finish this one off with the, uh, the Z-Man Helicross. Love the Elaztec for its buoyant nature. It just kind of kicks up like that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it, really, the Cross do get in a defensive position. And I think that what's good about these one ounce jigs is they're heavy. They're smacking against the rocks. You know, you're you're gonna feel them when they take it. If you kind of go over a <clears throat> over a branch or something, and one starts moving with it, you know, if if the line is going down, hits a branch and then goes down, when you're you're rooting around in that brush, <clears throat> you're still gonna feel that bite. But <clears throat> yeah. Pretty happy with that that jig. It's gonna be real good in deep water. Let's go ahead and do the black one. So got a couple tools for tying. We're gonna start with the the bucktail. Um, got a bobbin. Uh, this is size E black thread. Some pretty pretty solid stuff there. Um, and I got this flyhead cement applicator that. Um, you know when when we've tied up that thread and I gotta kind of prime it kind of wake it up so I get some of that coming through there but once you get um, get your tie done I'm gonna have to pull this off it's been sitting there um, you put a couple drops of this on there and it just seals up 
that thread but sometimes you gotta these get gummed up so I'm gonna push it through from the inside out yep there we go yep clear that off and uh, yeah we're good so that'll be ready when I need it um, for the hair um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not gonna go real heavy with it I'm just gonna take a little little pinch there about that much because if I was just using the hair I'd probably use a little bit more but I'm cutting it off close to the hide you got a little pinch of it like that. I'm going to turn the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Alright, so we're going <clears> to... <throat> I'm actually going to set that aside. I'm going to take a couple turns on this with the thread just to kind of get a base... Um, base layer of it down there so that it's going to grip. I'll take this, this tag end and trim that off. And I turn it hook, size, hook side down and I'll get our little tuft of bucktail here. Put that on the back side and just wrap it around there. Um, you can take it and kind of smush it to kind of get it on all sides. Yep, that way it's kind of flared out. I'm happy with how that looks. You can add as much as you want. Um, I've even done it with with rabbit strips. All right, I'm just <clears throat> some people use a razor blade to cut this, but you know. I'm actually okay with it not being totally clean. Um, I tie a lot of jigs, so I don't really worry about them being perfect. You basically get some hair on a on a hook, and uh, they're going to eat it. You do want to make sure that you've cut off. <clears throat> all the hair around where you're going to insert that bristle guard. So I will take a little bit more care to clear that off. So that's not a very big body. Really what's going on here is I'm, I'm looking to add um, <clears throat> multiple different types of materials for multiple different kinds of motions. So the hair is going to move one way. Uh, the skirt layer is going to move another so I'm taking the full length of this and I'm placing this <clears throat> this on there with maybe an inch all right so the part that flares out here is going to be pretty short but it's going to be a big u-shape and I'm going to have the same about an inch here on the other side. And this is one of two, two layers, two skirt layers that I'm going to put on here. This one's just black, right? So we will slide that around. And <clears throat> so the side that is kind of closed, we're going to open that. And you see how that all just kind of opened it up. Just cut that off. <clears throat> and then on this side, it's the, it's the U. So we're going to trim that up and just free all those strands to kind of spread out and give that kind of leg motion of the, the crayfish. So, pretty full bodied as is. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about adding this one that has the blue fleck, but I think I like how this looks just like that. 
it is missing one what I feel is an important um, component and that's the round rubber. Round rubber has its own unique action and um, <clears throat> if you just take two or three strands that are long like this, this can represent the antenna of the of the crayfish. So you just lay that on top, give it a couple wraps, and um, I'm gonna pull that so I get the right length. Yep, just so it grabs it. And uh, <clears throat> we're about done. So I'll wrap around here a few more times. So <clears throat> what the skirt does, <clears throat> besides provide a little bit of bulk, a little bit of motion, um, it also makes it so that when the fish suction feeds in, they go <clears throat> and bring it into their mouth. It creates surface area so that it it has something to pull that that heavy one ounce um, jig. So I think I got enough surface area with what I got here. Um, we're gonna get a little bit longer section. We're gonna do. We just made a loop. I don't know if you saw that. I took my two fingers and I made a loop. Okay. You take that loop. You put it over right where you've been tying and I pinch the fingers here and I draw that tight. It's a half hitch. You do two of them. You can do three if you'd like. <clears throat> and where that knot comes together, you kind of scoot it back and forth. We're going to come back to this thing and we're going to apply just enough. Let's see if I get that. To... Oh, I had it started. <clears throat> I think what's in here is lost its liquidity. I also didn't put this back on there. It gets dried out a little bit, but I will get this flowing. And you just put a couple drops, you know, right on <clears throat> where those those half hitch knots were. Yeah, now we got something coming. Yep. And that's really all you're doing is is kind of cementing the knot that you had made. I'll put some on this side too. Yeah. When it's real liquid, it comes out a little bit quicker, but that's enough. It's going to do the trick. All right, you can trim this. <clears throat> We're going to take the round rubber and pull it apart. These long strands of the round rubber will lift up off the bottom just like the crayfish antenna so all right the last thing we're doing same thing as the other one you just get the the bristle the tip of the bristle guard or the base of it a little bit wet and I got a little bit of the gorilla glue here I'm just gonna kind of scrape some of that up yep And we're going to insert that right in that pin, um, which is, is especially for the FG30 bristle guard. Once I get it in there, you, you just let it, um, you let it cure overnight. I got to get a better little chunk of that. Yeah, just like my flyhead cement, my Gorilla Glue is drying out. <clears throat> you get one bottle of this stuff and it'll last you forever, but I think I'm due for a new one. 
So, let's see. All right, we got enough of it on there. Sometimes you gotta twist it and shove it in at the same time. But that'll be good. I will take it once it's cured and split them. I like to have them, the bristle guard go out like this. That way when the, if you're taking this through brush and it rolls over, it's gonna do a pretty good job keeping that hook upright. But in case it rolls on its side, having that forked bristle guard. And, and all you do is you, you kind of split it and mash it down and make a V. Um, it just gives you a little bit extra insurance on, on that hook point not catching, um, not, not gathering wood. So uh, these are pretty big jigs and on this black one I'm gonna use the larger bat wings. It's the three and a half incher. Nice, nice big claw profile. Um, this one's gonna be good for sure for the more turbid or muddy water. We just keep that centered. Shove it right on there. Slide that down. And uh, got another really good looking deep water jig. So black is what I fish most of the time. That's why I made a few more blacks than the greens, but for sure there are days where the green one is is gonna outperform. So two different ways to, to put these together. Um, you know, for sure if you're just looking to get a quantity of them going, these, these uh, pre-made skirts are the way to go. Wanna get a little bit more creative and you can play around with the bucktail and round rubber and, and the skirt layers. So thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I've inspired you to make some of your own jigs. See ya.